Even though my family's dining room table is usually too full of food for any sort of decoration, there's one particular centerpiece associated with Thanksgiving. Whether you paid an exorbitant amount of money for one at Williams Sonoma or found one at a consignment shop, this symbol of abundance has a history that extends further back than the American Thanksgiving. In this episode, we'll be talking about Greek mythology involving the Horn of Plenty, how it's portrayed in paintings, and even its appearance in The Hunger Games. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind the cornucopia. But first, a quick word from Hashtag Potter and Family, a great group of indie podcasters like me. Want to know the story behind Potter and Family? Potter and Family started with a hashtag for indie podcasters, the podcasters who do this for fun and because we're passionate. We're not the big podcast you hear about, most likely. We don't have 10 to 15 people helping us with production. But that doesn't mean the quality and content you're getting isn't as good as any of those shows. Is there an area of interest you like talking to people about? Listen to an indie podcast on that topic. The hosts are incredibly reachable. We're basically clamoring to hear from listeners. We're just as much your fans as you are ours. No matter what you're interested in, Potter and Family's got a show for you. Like movies and TV? Check out the epic film guys, the Something Something cast, the Boxers, or the Countdown movie and TV review. Do you like comedy? Check out Everyone Has a Podcast, The One Word Go Show, Afterburn 739, Now That I'm Older, Rick and Paul Heal the World, or Off in the Weeds. How about random trivia and fun facts? Check out The Endless Knot, or The Story Behind. Like comic books and geek culture? Check out Geek Yogurt Podcast or Little Geek Lost. I could go on, and believe me when I say there are a whole lot more where that came from. But you can find all these and more by searching the hashtag Potter and Family on Twitter. A cornucopia in America is often associated with Thanksgiving. The word comes from the Latin phrase cornu copiae, which translates to horn of plenty. The Latin word cornu relates to something horn-shaped, which you'll also see in words like cornet, a horn-shaped instrument similar to a trumpet a unicorn, and the word cone is derived from it. In 1904, an ice cream vendor at the St. Louis World's Fair ran out of bowls, so he had a waffle vendor, who happened to be next to his stand, come up with the idea to wrap a wafer-like waffle into a cone shape and serve ice cream in it. And it became known as the World's Fair Cornucopia, better known now as an ice cream cone. The cornucopia isn't just used for the horn-shaped wicker decoration filled with fruits on a Thanksgiving table. It's also a way of saying an abundant supply, such as a cornucopia of ideas. In fact, it's become such a popular symbol of abundance, pictures of rolling fields of grain and cornucopias were used to lure settlers to the New World. And it's depicted on a number of state and country flags, as well as some historical currency, government seals, and buildings. We may associate the cornucopia with Thanksgiving, but its origins go much further back. So far back, it begins with Zeus as an infant in Greek mythology. When he was hidden away from his father, the Titan Kronos, he was cared for by Almalthea, who was portrayed as either a she-goat or a water nymph. According to one version, baby Zeus was suckling on the milk from the she-goat Almalthea, who took care of him, and he accidentally broke off her horn. The horn was then magically filled to provide Zeus with a never-ending supply of nourishment. The version in which Almalthea is a water nymph differs in that Almalthea is said to have brought milk from a goat for baby Zeus, and the goat herself broke off her own horn and Almalthea filled it with fresh fruits and herbs to give to baby Zeus. The more I keep saying baby Zeus, the more I'm thinking of adding it to my list of baby names. Hmm. There are other versions of the story of Almalthea and the Horn of Plenty, which represents abundance, including a Roman equivalent where, instead of Zeus, it was Hercules who broke off the horn. 
There are many other versions of the story of the Horn of Plenty, which always represents abundance, including a Roman equivalent where instead of Zeus, it was Hercules who broke off the horn. And instead of accidentally breaking it off as a child, Hercules broke off the horn of the river god Achelous in a battle. If you ever get confused about which myths are Greek and which myths are Roman, the Roman ones are usually much more violent. Following his acquisition of the horn, nymphs filled Hercules' horn with the choicest fruits of the autumn. The horn back then was used by Greeks and Romans as a vessel to drink from, so it's no wonder that it represented abundance, which carries on through today. The symbolism of the horn, and later the cornucopia as abundance, was easily carried on through the use of art. You'll often see cornucopias depicted in many paintings, either in the background, on a table, or as the main subject of a still life. The usage usually depicts wealth, since only the very wealthy could afford to keep a cornucopia, always filled with fresh fruits, nuts, and breads. But another reason you'll see it in art is because it's a good subject to practice painting with, since the shape of it and dimensions add a challenge to beginning painters. If I were to try to draw one, for example, you would just see a triangle on a page. But professional painters have to know how to work with shadows and highlights to make an object like a cornucopia have the dimension of the larger opening being closer to the viewer and the smaller point at the end being further away. They also have to be able to make it convincingly look like it's resting on a flat surface. This is actually incredibly difficult to achieve. One last note about the symbolism of the cornucopia. In the Hunger Games book, there is a horn-shaped cone called the cornucopia, which is filled with supplies and weapons for the tributes. Now, I haven't read these books, but now that you know the story behind the cornucopia, if you've read them, I'd love to hear from you if you're having that aha moment about the use of the cornucopia in the Hunger Games books. You can either share them in an email to thestorybehindpod at gmail.com, on Twitter at storybehindpod, or comment on the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Information for this episode was sourced from Atlas Obscura, coi.com, mythfile.com, Bright Hub Education, The Hunger Games Wikia, and The Daily Meal. For these links and more, visit the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Follow on Twitter at storybehindpod or subscribe on your podcatcher of choice so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.